Ian Hubert, I am glad to see that you're doing all these tutorials about modeling and stuff. And I have a few more tips. I know that you are super great at this and uh, I just feel like maybe you're missing a few things. There are some tools that I think you could use. Uh, the railings to start off with on your mega structure tutorial, uh, there's an easy way to get those railings selected so that you can subdivide them all at once. You select the vertical edge, shift G to select grouped and then by length. So then you've got all those vertical edges selected, control I to invert selection, and now you've got all the horizontal sections selected and you can subdivide them as far as you want. So that's a great way to do that. Although I would suggest doing railings a different way, which I'll go into a little bit later. Uh, shift R, it has to be the same command. It only works on one command. So as you know, it, the one command only. So just like make sure to, to like duplicate and then rotate all in the same command. Don't hit escape and don't like try to move and rotate at the same time because that won't work. Uh, so yeah, shift R. Awesome. I'm glad you remembered to do it. Just like remember that you have to do it all in one command. Um, procedural non-destructive tools. I do this too much. I'm too non-destructive. I'm too non-committal. I like to like have my whole stack of modifiers and never commit to anything so that I can always change it later. But it's really nice when you do do the modifier stack if you need to change something later. It's super reusable. It's really easy to grab stuff and move them around or import it into something else and then you can use it uh, the same stack for some other purpose. Uh, it's also a lot smaller file size because it's easier to share to, with other people. Uh, maybe that doesn't matter too much, but it seems to, I don't know, it helps. I, I feel better about it when it's a smaller file size. You know, you don't end up with megabyte files. They're always like, you know, a few hundred K. So that's, that's cool. Um, cleaner result too. A lot, a lot of times if it's all subdivision and, uh, uh, then you don't have to worry about moving individual pixels and, or vertices to the right place. So it gets a lot nicer and then, uh, solidify gives you very consistent thickness for stuff so that it's not uh, a weird looking, it looks like you did it by hand. It's all very clean and, and professional looking. So, uh, it can get you better results and also just makes better use of your computation because you've got this fancy computer and you may as well use it. Uh, so shortly uh let's see smooth surface modeling do you subdivide you got to use it it's so so handy i don't see you using subdivide very often and uh it's great also you can use shrink wrap shrink wrap is fantastic for modifying uh big shapes and stuff like that and you can combine it with solidify and stuff like that here's a, this big ship that i made and it is i i love how versatile this is and how easy it is to modify stuff uh so shrink wrap and subdivide are key uh, also, the screw modifier is really nice. I like to set the rotation down to zero and then set the, the extrude part and use that for doing like single vertex lines or like, you know, having a few vertexes and then converting it all into this giant object. So screw is really nice for, for really lightweight uh, procedural modeling. Solidify, of course, you know about. It's really nice. Uh, don't forget to use solidify modifier. Uh, lattice is really great for moving things around when you don't have... Uh, exactly the right shape you're looking for or you want to use reuse an asset a lot of times but you want it to have different shapes uh, or or make something look damaged without making a new asset and and making a you know being able to change it later and retexture it lattice is really really handy just remember to not move the outside edges of it if you don't want the any area outside of the lattice to be affected so if you want to modify just a single area in the lattice subdivide it enough and then don't move the points outside the uh, on the outside edges of the lattice so that you can reposition that anywhere you want and and make that alteration to the mesh locally and you can have a bunch of mod lattice modifiers all going at once that's it, it's no problem um and then for wires and things uh as you've shown it's really nice to have a mesh instead of a uh, a curve so but the skin modifier and then decimate don't forget to use decimate uh by by faces i think face by angle face angle uh, so that you can have straight and curved sections. The bevel modifier, I, I'm, I've got mixed results with it. Sometimes it's fantastic, but sometimes it just doesn't do what you need to do and you have to apply it and then you may as well just have done it in the mesh anyway. So uh, that's some tips. If you're not Ian Hubert, go get awesome like Ian Hubert and then come back and do these things or just learn the stuff too. It, you know, you don't have to be him, but this is uh, specifically, I'm skipping a bunch of stuff that I know that he already knows and so that I'm not going over old territory. Okay, thanks. Have a great time. Enjoy it. Bye.